40 acres and a mule was an order by the United States government to take plantation owners' land, some 400,000 acres across the South, and give it to newly freed slaves as reparations for slavery near the end of the Civil War. Most people don't know the idea actually came from a group of 20 black ministers led by a brother named Garrison Frazier, 76 years of age and a slave until 1857 when he purchased freedom for himself and his wife for $1,000 in gold and silver. In a meeting with General William T. Sherman, when asked what did he want for his people, he answered, land. The way we can best take care of ourselves is to have land and turn it and till it by our own labor and we can soon maintain ourselves and have something to spare. And when asked next where the freed slaves would rather live, whether scattered among the whites or in colonies by themselves, without missing a beat, Frazier replied that, I would prefer to live by ourselves, for there is a prejudice against us in the South that will take years to get over. Shortly after this, Special Field Order No. 15 was approved by President Lincoln. Special Field Order No. 15 Series 1865 were military orders issued during the American Civil War on January 16, 1865 by General William T. Sherman, commander of the military division of the Mississippi of the United States Army. They provided for the confiscation of 400,000 acres of land along the Atlantic coast of South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and the dividing of it into parcels of not more than 40 acres on which were to be settled approximately 18,000 former enslaved families and other blacks then living in the area. The effect sent shockwaves throughout the South. The freedmen hastened to take advantage of the order. Baptist minister Ulysses L. Houston, one of the group that had met with Sherman, led a thousand blacks to Skidaway Island, Georgia, where they established a self-government community with Houston as the black governor. And by June, 40,000 freedmen had been settled on 400,000 acres of quote-unquote Sherman land. By the way, Sherman later ordered that the army could lend the new settlers mules, hence the phrase, 40 acres and a mule. So what happened to the United States government's promise? The orders had little concrete effect. President Andrew Johnson, Lincoln's successor and a sympathizer with the South, issued a proclamation that returned the lands to the Southern owners that took a loyalty oath. Before the lands were returned, Congress was able to provide legislation to assist some families in keeping their lands. On March 4, 2011, in Savannah's own Madison Square, located at the intersection of Bull Street and Harris Street, the Historical Society unveiled a new marker commemorating the famous meeting between 20 African American ministers from Savannah and General William T. Sherman. The subject of this meeting? The famous 40 acres and a mule that were promised to the former slaves as a way for them to gain an economic footing after centuries of forced slave labor without pay. This is 40 acres and a mule.